once you're satisfied with your localization planning and you know exactly where you'd like to place your trocar for biopsy, first step is to set the depth mark. There's a ring that slides on the sheath that you can determine your depth. Now you can set it to be at the exact depth you want to be at ultimately. We have found it beneficial to actually give yourself another centimeter or so of leeway. So if you wanted to get to six centimeters, we'll pull it back to about seven. And the reason for that is as you're introducing the stylet and trocarp, there's sometimes some degree of recoil in the breast tissue and you may actually need to indent the breast somewhat to get to your ultimate depth. Having set your depth, you then slide the trocar in place and introduce this first through your block. We would advise doing this so that you're able to actually find the skin nick you've made rather than put the block in first and then potentially miss the skin nick. So having done this, we first insert the trocar through the skin nick until we get to about the level of the sheath. At that point, then make sure your block is firmly seated, and then introduce the trocar with a gentle twisting motion, advancing to the depth that you've determined on your biopsy plan. Once you've reached that depth, just rotate the trocar slightly Sometimes there'll be some additional recoil of the breast tissue and you may be uh, slightly shallower than you think. So make sure there's no more recoil of the breast tissue and that you're then at the depth that you planned. Having done that, grasp the sheath, pinch it, and rest your fingers against the block. Then remove the trocar. This prevents any inadvertent movement of the sheath and therefore losing your depth mark. You then replace the trocar with an obturator. Having confirmed the appropriate positioning of your obturator, inform your technologist of the positions you wish to biopsy and the settings to place on the CenterX console. While that is being performed, return to the suite and you'll remove the obturator. Again, pinch the sheath flush with the block to avoid any movement of the sheath. Remove the obturator. You'll then receive the CenterX biopsy gun. As you can see, the mechanism for running the gun is in a standard position oriented inferiorly. With this orientation, 12 o'clock denotes superiorly towards the patient. This allows access in very superior lesions with very little clearance needed to get the biopsy gun past the grid. Alternatively, if you had an inferior access you were trying to make, you can switch the position of the collection chamber so that it remains dependent and advance the needle in a more inferior position. So you have that great degree of flexibility as far as moving the actual mechanism so it's not impeding your entrance. Prior to actually beginning your biopsy, make one last visual check that the aperture for the biopsy is at the expected location. In this case, you can see the red indicator that this is at the 12 o'clock position, making sure that that's the position you wish to start with. To insert the device, again, grasp the sheath to prevent any movement. Seat the device all the way against the introducer sheath, and then you can activate the biopsy either by depressing a button on the handle device itself or alternatively by pressing the foot pedal and activating the device. Once you've planned the biopsy, holding down either the button or the foot pedal will activate your fully planned biopsy. You merely hit the button or the pedal, hold it until the biopsy is completed and the device will stop. Once you've inserted the CenterX biopsy device, check one last time with your technologist that the position and the planned biopsy is recorded within the console and then merely either press the foot pedal or the biopsy button on the gun. The vacuum will start. It will begin obtaining biopsies as planned. With each biopsy specimen there's automatically a saline rinse to clean the specimen.
the gun will complete the planned course of biopsies and when completed it will stop and you can release your foot pedal or your push button. When your biopsy is complete, if there's excessive hemorrhage, you can do additional rinsing by pressing the vacuum button on the foot pedal or the handheld device and then notifying your technologist who will provide additional rinse. Once you've completed your planned biopsy cycle, remove the chamber. You can see the specimen that was obtained collected within the, the collection chamber. Exchange it for a clean chamber in order to maintain fluid integrity within this closed system. Once you've completed your post-biopsy imaging and you're satisfied with adequate sampling of the lesion in question, return to the MRI suite and re replace your obturator into the sheath, again assuring not moving the sheath by locking your fingers. You then will deploy localization clips directly through the obturator, introducing the deployment device. You will feel a pop and it will seat against the obturator. Initially, the deployment device is locked. By merely rotating the wheel clockwise, it will become disengaged, and then you deploy the localization markers in the biopsy cavity. Once deployed, merely remove the device, and your procedure is completed. Once you're satisfied with your biopsy and have deployed localization clips, then you'll remove the sheath simultaneously with the lateral grid in order to get pressure onto the puncture site as quickly as possible. Grasp both of them simultaneously, remove them, and apply pressure immediately to the site.